Okay, so in this problem we're told if you are driving 110 kilometers per hour along a straight road and you look to the side for two seconds, how far do you travel during this inattentive period? So first we got to draw what's going on. It's always good to do that. So we have this car. We're traveling at 110 kilometers per hour and we're basically going to look to the side for two seconds. And what we're trying to find is how far this car is going to travel. And so we can denote that by this variable delta x, which basically delta just means the change in and x is your position. So you can imagine this is the x-axis. So we're basically just finding how far our change in the x is, uh, which is basically your distance. And so this is going to be your first problem in kinematics. So the way you solve kinematics, which are basically just the study of, or not the study, but essentially we just look at problems of how we move with constant acceleration. So it's basically motion. And the way I always like to start it off is by writing my given. And then in kinematics, you're going to be solving these equations. And there's four main equations. You can look them up. Just type in kinematic equations and you'll see them. And basically what we do is we plug in variables into those equations to solve for other variables. So there's five main kinematic variables, which I'll write them here. Delta x, v sub zero, v, a, and t. And I'll break down each of these. But essentially what delta x is before is basically how the distance you travel. So how far you move. Uh, and then v sub zero is your initial velocity in an interval. So in this case, uh, we're doing the interval of this change in position. So your initial velocity would be uh, how far or your or how fa how fast you're traveling in the beginning. So your initial velocity would just be your speed right here. Your final velocity is the velocity at the end of this interval. So whatever your speed would be uh, when you ch finish this distance, right? So your velocity there, uh, acceleration is your change in velocity. So how fast you're accelerating, how fast you're increasing that speed or decreasing over this interval. And t is how long this interval is. So notice which one we're solving for. We want to find delta x or the change in position. That's what they want us to find. We know the initial velocity, which is the velocity at the beginning of this interval is 110 kilometers per hour. Uh, and then the final velocity we uh, don't know. So we're just going to leave it out. Uh, acceleration. Unless specified differently, they say we're just traveling at this speed. We're not accelerating. So we're not increasing our speed at all. So it's zero meters per second squared. That's the units. And then our time is two seconds. So this is how long the interval is. Our acceleration, we don't accelerate. Uh, and then V sub zero is just given to us. And now what we want to find is delta x. So what I want you to do is just look up kinematic equations. And then we're going to decide which equation to use uh, based on the variables given. So uh, the one we're going to use is this one right here. Delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared. So this is one of the most popular kinematic equations, which basically tells us the change in the distance is equal to your initial velocity times time plus 1 half times your acceleration times the time squared. So all we got to do now is, uh, and also the reason I chose this one is because we have v sub 0, we have t and we have a. So I have every variable needed to solve. So that's the reason I chose this one. So just make sure you understand that. Um, but now it's just a matter of plugging it in. But the first thing you have to realize too, though, is our, um, our units don't line up. So generally, when you solve kinematic equations, you want things in or your velocity in meters per second, not in kilometers per hour. So what we're going to have to do is convert that into uh, the correct units. So you have 110 kilometers per hour, but we're converting it into meters per second. So you should know that uh, one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. That's what the K means. Uh, it just means 1,000. So 1,000 meters. Now we have it in meters per hour, but we want it in meters uh, per second. So we have to convert hours to seconds. So you should know one hour is 60 minutes. So now we have it in meters per minute. And now we got to convert. Uh, minutes to seconds, but one minute is the same as 60 seconds. So your minutes will cancel. Uh, and then now it's just a matter of plugging it in. So we have seconds, right? Meters per second now. So we have the correct unit. So 110 times a thousand, and then you're dividing by 60 and then dividing by 60 again. So 30.556, I'll round it to. Uh, and then the units are again, meters per second. So uh, now we have it in the correct units our initial velocity. So now we can plug it in since they're all correct. So the initial velocity is, as I said before, 30.556 times the time, how long this goes for, two seconds plus, and then notice A is actually zero. So one half times A 
is just zero. So this whole term is going to go to zero. So since you're not accelerating, really all you have to do is just multiply by uh, multiply your initial velocity times how long the interval is. And that'll give you um, your distance. And you, you can see that because this is in meters per second and this is in seconds. So your seconds will cancel and you'll just be left with meters, which is a distance unit. So performing this now, you're going to get 61.1111 repeating. I use the exact value. So you can just round it to about 61 meters. Um, you can round however you'd like. Just make sure you do it how your teacher wants you to. Uh, yeah, so about 61 meters, that's going to be your answer. And so just the main takeaways for this problem and for this whole chapter, uh, it's just you got to memorize these kinematic equations. Just look them up. Uh, it's important to memorize them because you're going to be using them in every single one of these problems. Not You're not going to use all of them in each problem, but you're going to use at least one. So just look them up. Uh, and this is probably the most common one, so you'll be using this a lot. And then the other takeaway is just notice that um, these variables you got to get familiar with. So whenever you do a problem like this, it's always good to write out your given and all the variables, just because it makes it easier to plug in and know which equation you're going to actually have to use if you have them written out. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's also good to draw a picture too like this so you understand what's going on. But this right here is going to be your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this video helpful.